Hello and welcome to this clip going through the Chemistry Olympiad 2017 paper, question 3. Uh, this particular paper, um, sorry, this particular question even, is about um, the chemistry behind the superhero Iron Man. And uh, the idea is that it's going to use um, a concept called unit cells in metal lattices to base its chemistry questions on. Now, apart from the fact that the Iron Man is a fictional character. Um, there is some sort of science behind what was going on in the film in that titanium is actually used as, uh, as a, a metal in engineering structures because it's very, very strong. And also it started to be um, investigated since about 2016 in combination with, um, with gold. So a titanium uh, gold alloy has been found to be uh, much, much harder than pure titanium. And it's also uh, accepted in the human body, so it doesn't uh, get rejected by joints. So it's good for screws and hips and knee joints and things like that when fractures and, uh, and breakages are being fixed in medicine. So you'll see that I've mentioned um, in writing as well the idea of unit cells. Now, in case you haven't come across unit cells before, it's actually not really an A-level idea. So I'm going to spend a couple of minutes just going through very briefly what a unit cell is. So in very simple terms, a unit cell represents the smallest three-dimensional unit existing within a metal lattice. And at the corners you have what are called lattice points. And the lattice points will have metal cations at their positions. And the metal cations can be packed into a unit cell in different ways. And depending on how the cations are stacked, uh, different numbers of ions can be imagined to exist within the cube itself, with different amounts of packing efficiency. So you've got simple cubic, body centric cubic, and face centric cubic, to give you simple examples. So the reason I've gone through this is to introduce the idea of unit cells prior to sort of getting stuck into the question. So let's now have a look at the question itself. So part A. Uh, looks at a titanium compound called titanium nitride, which is used to um, coat titanium cutting tools. So, for example, maybe a, a, a drill that has to drill into rock has to be really, really hard and tough, so they might put titanium nitride coating on the steel of the drill. So it says, thin films of titanium nitride are, are typically prepared by a technique called chemical vapour deposition. Uh, where the titanium nitride is formed on surfaces called substrates heated above 320 degrees C in an atmosphere of titanium for chloride and ammonia. So they've got an unbalanced equation. It's important that you recognise that because obviously it says unbalanced and it's underlined it. And it's given the balancing numbers A, B, C, D and E. So let's look at the um, oxidation state first. So the first thing to do is to look at where nitrogen is in the periodic table. It's in group 5, so it requires three more electrons to complete its outer shell and form the nitride ion. So titanium is a metal, nitrogen is a non-metal. Unless we're otherwise told, we can assume that it's going to be an ionic bond between them. So that allows us to assign the oxidation state for titanium as 3 plus. In the next part, it's saying which element is being oxidised in the reaction between titanium 4 chloride and ammonia. Now, because it's got titanium 4 chloride, that must mean the titanium is plus 4. Now, in the compound we've just worked out for titanium nitride, it's plus 3. So that's a reduction, so it can't be titanium. So let's look at what else we've got. So looking at the nitrogen, it's gone from minus 3 to 0. That's an increase in oxidation number, so that must mean that nitrogen is being oxidised. So let's just summarise our workings so far, our answers rather. And then finally, they want us to balance the above equation. So balancing the equation is likely to require considering the changes in oxidation number to get the values for A, B, C and D and E. 
And the reason I say that is because we've just been asked to think about it, so it's highly likely that because it's all part of the same question, that we need to bring this all together now using oxidation numbers. So you can see that titanium is reduced by gaining one electron. It goes from titanium 4 plus to titanium 3 plus. And nitrogen is oxidized by losing three electrons. So three titanium 3 plus ions must be reduced to facilitate this process. So for this to happen, we need to look at the balancing numbers of all the different species. So if you have uh, three titaniums to one nitrogen, then you have to do it in terms of one nitrogen atom at the end. So 0 0.5 N2. So for each titanium uh, to, make, to react with one nitrogen, you need to have uh, three TiCl4, 4NH3, 3TiN, 12HCl, and 0.5N2. So the next part of the question asks us to consider the material that the Iron Man suit is made of, which is an um, alloy of titanium and gold. So one mole of this alloy, Ti3Au, obviously has three moles of titanium to one mole of gold. So the MR of that particular um, alloy will be 340.67 grams per mole. So what we've got to do is to consider in the question what masses of each individual metal do we need to make 40 kilogram of that alloy. So if we think about the amount of alloy we need to make, which is 40 kilos, and the proportion of um, each metal present, which in terms of the moles is the atomic um, mass of the metal divided by the molar mass of the alloy, you can see quite e easily what we need to multiply. So 40 kilograms times 143.7 over 340.67. 143.7 obviously being um, 3 lots of 47.90. That makes it 16.87 kilograms for titanium and 23.13 kilograms for gold. So now they want us to consider the unit cell aspect of the alloy. So as a quick recap, the lattice points are at the corner of the unit cell and the actual cube itself contains varying amounts of individual atoms depending on how closely they've been packed. Now you don't have to worry about simple cubic, body centre cubic or face centre cubic for this particular part of the question. So let's, let's imagine gold atoms at the corners, the lattice points. We can also put in the titaniums. So that gives us 8 IAU atoms per unit cell and 6 titanium atoms per unit cell. So this time, it asks you how many titanium atoms surround each gold atom. So instead of imagining the gold at the lattice points, imagine the titanium atoms at the lattice points. So now we imagine that uh, each individual gold atom sits in the middle of the face, half of it going inside the cube, half of it outside. So for it to be completely surrounded, you need two unit cells, and that would mean 12 titanium atoms. So if we take our information so far, for the answer to the first part of part C, 12 titanium atoms surround each gold atom. And it asks how many gold atoms surround each titanium atom. So to do this we need to consider the left-hand diagram, and you can see quite clearly that the, ti the titanium atom is smaller than gold. So therefore, um, four gold atoms will completely surround each titanium atom, so we only need to consider one face rather than two unit cells. So if you take into account the four titanium atoms in the same face, plus also the four adjacent faces where there's a titanium atom halfway down, that's also going to be um, included as the next nearest neighbours. So that makes eight titanium atoms. So we're now going to do part D, which takes a bit of calculating this time round, rather than visualising the positions of atoms. So the next part asks us to consider the distance between a titanium and a gold. 
We assume that means between the nucleus of the titanium and the nucleus of the gold. So you can see that if you look at a titanium atom, it sits on the centre of a face, which means that you can use Pythagoras' theorem to work it out. So the hypotenuse, which is the longest part of the triangle, is the, uh, if we square that, that's equal to the sum of the squares of the two sides. So in this case, 2x squared equals 2 times 4.15 squared. So working it through, you end up with x equals 2.93 angstroms. So the a, with a little uh, circle above it, is uh, a, a way of measuring, or a unit we use to measure um, uh, very small distances. So one angstrom equals 10 to the minus 10 metres. So the shortest distance between uh, two titanium atoms can be considered as y. So this time each side of the triangle is half the side of the unit cell, e.g. 4.15 uh, divided by 2, which makes 2.075 angstroms. So if we're trying to work out y this time, uh, we take 2.075 squared plus 2.075. 075 squared, applying Pythagoras again, and that gives us y equals 293, 2.93 sorry, angstroms. So moving on to part E, it has a slightly more complex form of the titanium gold alloy, where the titaniums are a bit more um, densely packed within the, um, the unit cell. So it says it has a gold atom centred at each corner of the, tube, the cube, so you've got uh, a gold atom at each lattice point, but also one in the middle, and this time the cube is a bit bigger to accommodate this. So the titanium atoms are arranged with two on each face, with the two separated by exactly half the length of the cube edge. So I've put two titanium atoms shown only on three faces for simplicity. So I've put in the distances shown and as described. So what they want us to do now is um, work out how many titanium atoms surround each gold atom. So if you take the uh, gold atom in the centre of the cube, each face has two titanium atoms. There are six faces, so that makes a total of 12 titanium atoms that surround each gold atom. So the next question asks is how many gold atoms surround each titanium atom? Now remember before that titanium is smaller than gold, you just need one face. So each face has four gold atoms. It's quite straightforward. So how many titanium nearest neighbours and next nearest neighbours are there around each titanium atom? So this one's a little bit trickier. Each titanium has its neighbour from the pair within each face and one neighbour in the same position in the next cube up. So think of two unit cells stacked up on top of each other. Going back to the original unit cell, each titanium atom also has two from each of the two opposing faces below it. And then added to this is the upper one from each of the other two faces. So that makes ten nearest and next nearest neighbours. So going down to part F, we need to consider the value for x. So to do this, we've got to think about the distance between, the, between one of the sides and one of the titaniums. So if the distance between the titaniums is 2.545 angstroms, in other words, 5.09 divided by 2, so 5.09 divided by 4 allows us to create a right angle triangle and use Pythagoras again. So taking the uh, hypotenuse as x, x squared equals 2.545 squared plus 1.2725 squared equals 8.096. So x is 2.85 angstroms. So for the final part of the question, f part ii, I've taken the mark schemes version just to explain it. Just because of the complications of putting the diagram in, I thought I'd just um, put it in here instead. So, um, it's the same idea. It's a Pythagoras-type um, situation, but there's two distances we need um, to 
qualify as a titanium atom and its next nearest neighbour because a titan each titanium has, uh, although it has a number of next nearest neighbours, some of them are one distance away, others are another distance away, so you have y and z to calculate. Okay, so hopefully this was a fairly useful clip. It was a difficult question from about part C onwards, um, but it's a good introduction to unit cells for university-level chemistry. So for now, thanks a lot for listening, and until next time, see you soon.